Welcome to FaceTime Fly Fishing. I am your host, Eric Straub. Glad you could join us today. It is September 24th. The fishing is starting to get better. Um, I hope you're enjoying some good fishing wherever you are. Uh, if you're at work, try to look busy today. We've got some fly fishing to discuss for the next 40 minutes. Um, I anticipate lots of questions and comments through the week. Please don't hesitate to contact me. My email is epstraup at gmail.com, E-P-S-T-R-O-U-P at gmail.com. My phone number is 814-505-4568. We are going to talk today about gear and specifically gear if you're on a budget. And I, I know many of you, as well as myself, I've been on a budget ever since I entered adulthood. So <laughs> I can relate to it. And what I want to talk about today is, is products that, are, that I really like, that are worth the money. And there are many products that aren't worth the money. And I want to just give you some guidelines um, so that you understand what you're purchasing. So if you're new to the sport, and it seems a little overwhelming. I completely understand. Uh, if you're not new to the sport and you, you haven't ventured out and tried some different things, maybe you'll get an idea or two from the show today. Um, <clears throat> so please don't hesitate to contact the show. You can use the Google Plus question answer toggle uh, that we have set up here. So if you have a question uh, throughout the broadcast, feel free to uh, send it in and uh, hopefully we can get them answered. If not, I will get to you uh, within the week. So um, feel free to make comments or ask questions. Our latest videos, um, and we were talking about videos on my website at www.ericstroutflyfishing.com. If you're not a member of FaceTime, go check that out. Uh, you'll see lots of videos. There's some that are free on there that you can check out. Uh, and, and see what the site is all about. But the whole idea behind the site is informational videos. And uh, our latest video was called A September Morning. I put that out the other day. It came at a well-needed time. You know, they say that uh, a picture is worth a thousand words. Let's say that a video is worth a million. Um, that was such a beautiful morning. It was so nice to get out and after a week of trying to film things that just weren't working on the river, and I knew they weren't working, uh, although I still tried to do it thinking I was going to be able to catch a few here and there, um, I needed that day, and I went out, and hopefully I captured it in a way that was pleasing to you. Uh, I thought the video turned out pretty nice. Um, but we've got a great one on tap for probably tomorrow. I'll probably have it out. I've got the stuff shot. Um, I hit some terrific fishing on the river, and uh, it involved a, a very good hatch in the fall. And so be sure to check it out. It should be out tomorrow at some point. Uh, like I said, it, it's shot. It's not edited yet, but uh, it should be, should be pretty good. I am really excited uh, for those of you who uh, know about this project. If you don't know about it, beginning uh, October 4th, I am going to begin a series called 30 Days. October 4th is the first shoot date. That's when I'll start shooting the episode. But it's called 30 Days. It is 30 consecutive days on the river. And you're going to see a tremendous change in environment on that river. You'll probably see some water changes. You'll see some hatches. You'll see some foliage changes. Uh, everything kind of flips during that month and uh, it's going to be real interesting it's always um, a period of time during the year that that can be challenging uh, some days it'll be very challenging other days it'll be like taking candy from a baby and so what i wanted to do was document each day now i can't spend eight hours a day on the water i wish i could but there will be a portion of each day on the water and it will be shot and you will discover each day what I'm discovering on the water. And hopefully I can convey that in a way that it's educational for all of us. Um, I'm really excited about it. And uh, I've actually had uh, several people 
chime in and uh, want to be a part of that. So I'm trying to figure out how exactly I'm going to do that, but it's going to be a really neat series. And if you're not a member, go to my website, www.ericstroutflyfishing.com. Sign up today. It's 10 bucks a month. Uh, you can sign up for three months, six months, or 12 months. And uh, you can be a part of that of that program. It's going to be it's going to be educational at the very least. We have a couple of things of business real quick. We have a our nymph school this weekend, uh, beginning Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, we actually had a guy drop out. We've got one slot available. So if you're interested in taking our nymph school, this is a $600 package. It's all inclusive. It, it covers your meals, instruction, lodging, everything. All you have to do is show up with a license and a rod that you like to nymph with. So um, if you're interested, contact me. Either send me an email or or uh, send me a text or call me. But this is going to be a terrific school. It's going to be a good base for all of your nymphing techniques, whether you like to uh, longline nymph, uh, nymph with an indicator, if you're going to do a lot of steelheading, all of these practices will really help you take your game to the next level. Uh, I'm really excited about it. It's going to be a lot of fun. So if you're interested, we've got one space available. And uh, by the way, we eat pretty good on these things. So uh, if you like to eat and fish and talk about fishing, give me a call and, and sign up for this, uh, for this nymph school weekend. With that, we're going to move into our first or our, our main topic of the day. And like I said, don't hesitate to make a comment or a question. Um, I am not going to identify companies that I don't think are, are uh, worth you spending money with <laughs> for their products. But I will tell you companies that I do think are good. Um, I'm not in the. I don't have any interest in bashing anybody or causing anybody's business harm, but um, I want to talk about some general guidelines um, when you're looking at purchasing items, um, when you're looking at what's important and what's not. Uh, and so, um, I've had the good fortune of being able to test a lot of products only because I've been in the industry for a while and when I had my fly shop I had companies uh, always trying to get into the shop so I would have companies send me samples they would send me product to use and uh, if I liked the product generally I would sell it if I didn't I wouldn't sell it and it was that was one of the nice things about being an independent shop as opposed to being affiliated with somebody. I had full discretion over what we were going to sell. And so we had the, um, <clears throat> the idea in mind that we would only sell the products that we used. And it was a, a very good model for our shop. And uh, consequently, when we ended up selling the shop down the road, we had a company come in that bought the, the shop that uh, sold a lot of the things that we didn't sell because we didn't think they were a, a worthy product. And it actually hurt them a little bit, and, and, and they didn't last very long in that location. So um, I think there's, you know, credibility is very valuable in this business. And before I begin talking about the products, um, I just want you to know I have no skin in the game with any of these companies. Um, I don't get paid for talking about anybody um, with one exception. Uh, we're going to talk about rods and I'm going to bring up Temple Fork and I will say that I have had a very good relationship with Temple Fork. They actually uh, seeded me some uh, capital to begin this project and that's it. Um, I, I really got no obligation to them. If I didn't believe in their product, I wouldn't talk about it. So um, it was not in exchange for anything in particular. And so let me just put that out there so that there's everything is out on the table. Um, as far as any other products, I have zero skin in the game. So when I when I endorse somebody, um, I the only reason I'm endorsing them is because I've used the product and I like it. And so you can take that for what it's worth. To begin, I think, you know, when we look at 
fly fishing gear. Um, the number one thing or number one factor that you want to think about is um, what you're wearing. And the reason for that is because if you've got a pair of waders that leak, you're not going to go fishing. Now, you can use a bad rod or the wrong rod, quote, unquote, but if your waders are leaking, you're not going to go fishing. And so I think that the most important thing when you're on the water to having a good experience is being comfortable. And for that reason, you know, the one thing that you use more than anything and that can ruin your day quicker than anything else is your waders. And to me, they are the number one item that you should spend money on. So if you have a thousand dollars to budget for your fly fishing, you're going to want to make sure that you're going to spend uh, at least 40% of that on, on your wading gear. And that's your waders and your boots. And to me, uh, there, hands down, that is the most important thing. Now I can tell you that um, I sold Sims when I had the shop. I, I wore nothing but Sims for quite a while. Uh, I have tried everything. I field tested all of the Reddington products. Um, I have tried Chota boots. I've had uh, just about every brand under the sun. And I sort of uh, have migrated to the Orvis waders. If you've watched my videos, I buy a lot of my my personal gear from a local fly shop here called Fly Fisher's Paradise. And the reason that I bought Orvis waders from them was because I buy my stuff there. And I thought, I'll give these things a shot. So a couple of years ago, I bought a pair of Sonics. They were the latest and greatest. I have to tell you, they are the best waders I've ever worn. Um, they fit well. And I think that is one of the big issues with waders. Um, one of my problems with Reddington, I have to tell you, Redding, the waders that I field tested for Reddington were bulletproof. They were really, really good waders. I didn't like the way they fit me. And I didn't like the way the feet fit me. And it was just, it was a personal thing. I can tell you, I still have some of those waders, and it's been several years. And they're still good. Um, they're bulletproof. They're heavy. They're, they can withtake a lot. I field tested some of their models while I was in Montana, and some of the stuff that we used to walk through out there was amazing, and they lasted through that. So while I like the Reddington products, um, I have to say that the Orvis Sonics fit and move better than any waiter I've ever worn. Um, I didn't think I would ever find a waiter better than Sims. And uh, for the money, I, I got to tell you that the Orbis is better. It's a better waiter. I don't buy the, the chest ones. I buy the, the I guess they're mid-length, and then you can pull up a little section to, to cover your chest if you're going to cross a deep area. Um, they're, I, I want to say that they're, they retail for $279 or something, something around there. I have to tell you they are great waiters. I never get more than a year out of my waders. And the boots I wear, I normally get about six months out of them. Um, I've gotten a full year out of two sets of these waders, and I think they're terrific. So my recommendation for waders on a limited budget is the Orvis Sonics. They are hard, hard to beat. I've recommended them to several people that have gotten back to me and said, ah, said the same thing. They were really pleased with them. So I have no problem uh, recommending that. The other thing is, anytime you buy anything in fly fishing today, there should be a warranty with it. And unfortunately, I have to say, Orbis was the one that started that, to my knowledge, with, uh, with rods. And I have mixed feelings about it. As a consumer, it's, it's nice. Um, as a person in the business, it made business doing business very difficult. And it drove the price of everything through the roof. Um, I can think of no other sport that you have, you buy something and it's guaranteed if you go break it in your car door, it's, um, 
you get it replaced. It just doesn't make sense to me. And in the interest of of keeping costs down, I think it would be uh, it would make more sense to put a little onus on the consumer and say, hey, look, if you break it, tough luck, buy another one. But anyway, not to get off on that rant. So that's my waiting recommendation, my waiter recommendation. Boots, um, some of the best boots I've ever worn were made by Sims. Um, I've been wearing some Orvis boots that were not top of the line. I'm not happy with them, uh, so I can't speak. I know that they have a newer boot that I'm about to get. I'll probably get a pair in the next week or two. I will keep you updated on that. But some of the best boots I ever worn were the Sims boots. I like the Freestone. Um, they were sturdy. They didn't twist, and that's what I like about uh, wading boots. I don't want them to be real light. I don't like when companies advertise that this is the lightest wading boot on the market. That, that means nothing to me. And if that sole twists like this, um, it's bad for your feet. I can tell you I have lots of foot problems that I've talked about before. Uh, so I, I need a heavy boot that's solid and uh, that's going to get, if I get jammed in between some rocks, you know, it's not going to crush my toes. So I don't have a good recommendation for boots, but I can tell you some pro some manufacturers. Uh, Sims was, <coughs> excuse me, one of the best that I've worn. Now, we always get in, be, before we get into uh, some of the other gear, another area that you really want to consider spending some money on is your rain gear. Now, I have guys all the time that they, they, they come and they've got $400, $500 waders, they've got a $600 rod, and they pull out uh, a $20 rain jacket when it's pouring down rain, and before you know it, we're going back to the truck because they're soaked. So what good does all that gear do you and all that money that you spent on that gear if you can't stay out in the rain and do it? You know, to me, your rain gear and your comfort, and I've said this in the beginning of the show, your comfort is number one among all other things. If you're not comfortable, you're not going to enjoy fishing that $1,000 rod you're fishing. So be sure that you're going to be comfortable. Spend your money on your clothing and your gear. Uh, wading boots, waders, and rain gear. If you've got those three things, you're going to be set in any kind of condition, regardless if the fishing is good, poor, or whatever. You want to be comfortable. And so I have to say, I would never in a million years buy a rain jacket that was $400. But I used to sell them. And I was on the Sims Pro staff. And I got a great deal on one of those $400 jackets. Now, I bet that I've only worn it 15 times in the past 10 years. But I was glad every time I had it. So spend your money on some rain gear. The other thing that I have is a very light, packable rain jacket that I keep in my vest at all times. It's Gore-Tex. It, it was a couple hundred dollars. Most of the time, that, that pullover is just fine. Um, unless it is a really pouring, driving rainstorm that lasts all day long, I can wear that and stay dry. Um, and if it is really bad, like I said, I pull out that big $400 jacket. But um, your rain gear is really important. Do your research. You don't have to stay in the fly fishing community for a good raincoat. Um, you can go to the Cabela's, you can go to Columbia. I mean, there are lots of good Gore-Tex companies. Um, I have to say, Sims is right up there with, with everybody else. Uh, I've not tested the Orvis products uh, as far as rain gear, but um, I've got no trouble with these Sims. The, both jackets that I have and have used for the last five or six years are that old, so, and they still, they still work. So spend your money wisely there. Um, that is somewhere that, that is something that you don't want to skimp on. And before you buy anything else, make sure you've got stuff that's going to keep you comfortable. With that, we'll move on to what everybody always likes to talk about. And I bet I get an email or two a week asking me about rods. And 
Rods are just like opinions. You know, everybody's got got one on the rods. And so um, there's a couple of things I just want to throw out there um, for for you to chew on. Lefty Cray had one of the best quotes uh, that I can remember when I was doing my interview. And if you haven't seen that interview, go back into the archives. I want to say it's probably from, I think it was New Year's Day. It was. It was New Year's Day with Lefty Cray. So go back to January on our website. Look at the interview. One of the quotes that Lefty had about fly rods was he said, any rod that you buy today that costs more than $125 will probably cast better than the guy that bought it. And I could not agree more. Um, there are many, many, many good rods out there today. And while you can spend whatever you want on a rod, there are very few differences between the $800 rod and the $300 rod that are going to make you personally better at any particular thing. Um, I know for myself, um, I get the opportunity to throw lots of different types of rods. Um, every manufacturer that you can think of, I've cast, uh, I've probably fished a little bit with. Um, there is not a utilitarian difference between many of the rods. There's certainly rods that don't meet expectations. Um, and there are more than one rod that, that are in the $800 range that don't meet expectations. Um, and while I don't want to name those <laughs> on, on a public forum, if you're in the market for a rod and you really want my opinion on some manufacturers, um, feel free to send me uh, an email and I will gladly get back to you um, and tell you my thoughts. But I can tell you that in the fly fishing industry today, you can buy a terrific rod for $300 or less that will do everything that you want it to do. And it is not, you know, anywhere from that point up to $800, you're not going to find something that's going to make you a better caster. Um, so choose your, your, your financing wisely when it comes to rods. If you're new to this and you're just getting into it, you probably want two rods. Um, maybe you want three rods. You can spend less money per rod and get a couple of different options so that you're, you're able to fish different options and different types of water effectively. Um, you don't have to spend, you don't have to have a uh, top of the line rod Quite honestly, top of the line is nothing more than marketing. Um, I can tell you, you know, some of the best rods that are out there today. Um, there's only one rod that I've cast that I that that gave me the wow factor. That was in that $800 range, and that was the uh, the Orbis rod, the uh, Helios 2. I I have to say that one that rod wowed me, um, but. I can think of three other manufacturers that I picked up the rod and I just shook my head and I thought, what the, what the hell were they thinking when they made this? So um, send me an email if you want to know. <laughs> but uh, I can tell you one of the reasons that I am affiliated with Temple Fork is that their rods are good. And I'm going to give you, forgive me if you've heard the story before, but I'm going to give you um, – my initial story with, with Temple Fork. When Temple Fork first opened their doors, I just so happened to be selling some flies to Lefty Cray. Uh, he came up, it was when I had my shop. At that time, I wasn't a full-fledged shop. I was simply selling flies out of my dining room. 
and Lefty used to buy some flies from me. And he was in the area, he stopped in, he bought some flies, and he told me, he said, you need to have some rods. And I said, I don't want to have any rods. I'm not interested in that. I just want to sell my flies retail instead of wholesale because I needed money, <laughs> which is nothing new. Again, we get back to the budget thing. But anyway, uh, Lefty had just signed on with Temple Fork and worked with, uh, with them to develop. They had three lines of rods at the time. And he worked with them to get that des those designs in, in place. And he gave me a, a business card, and he said, you call this guy, Rick Pope, and tell him I told him to call you. He said, I'll call him prior to that so he knows you're going you're gonna to get in touch with him. Well, I did that, and Rick basically told me, I'm going to send you a catalog. You pick whatever you want out of there. I'll send them to you. You fish them. You do whatever you want. If you don't want them, send them back. That's what he did. And I ordered, uh, I, I want to say I ordered nine rods to begin with um, and fished every one of them and kept them, ordered 19 more rods and sold them just like that. I was impressed with the company. And in, in uh, I'm going to say that was 10 years ago. And since that time, I've never once had a problem with that company. I've had a couple of guys that have bought a rod took it home, cast it in their yard, it broke. Um, they FedExed one out the very next day. So I've never had a problem with the company. A lot of what I'm talking about today as far as budget stuff, something you want to consider is really to deal with companies that have reputable reputations that will take care of you if there's a problem. And one of my big things with Temple Fork is they are a good company, and you'll have very few issues with them. There's always an exception, I understand. But what I really like about Temple Fork is for $200, you get a rod that functions and functions well. Um, I can't say enough good things about their rods. And what I like about that is that I can buy several rods in different lengths and actions and things like that so that I can fish any situation. I am armed. I'm armed to fish anything. And so... There are several companies that you can do that with. And um, while I've never been really, really impressed with, say, the uh, Cabela's rods, there are a couple of their sticks that I like. But you can do that. Do your research. Cast the rods. You know, I've always said, don't buy a rod without casting it first. Um, that's very important. You want to make sure that you do that. There are many, many places that sell temple forks. You can go check them out and, and, and cast them. But you know, if you're going to have one fly rod, it should not be anything over $400. I promise you that. So that's my that's my budget advice for that. I've got a couple questions. Uh, Patagonia, Patagonia waders. I'm assuming you're asking about Chris. Um, I I have not worn Patagonia waders. I know some people that do, and they really like them. Uh, I don't know what their costs are either. Uh, the Dan Bailey waders. Um, I've heard good things about them. I don't, I have never owned a pair of Dan Bailey's, but, um, I, I know several guys that, that swear by them and they, they've had multiple pairs of them. So that's always a good sign. And, and again, I don't know what the costs on those are. <clears throat> so we'll take a little break here. I'm getting a little long winded. Um, Quick shout out from my buddy Kevin Compton at Performance Flies. Uh, if you're a member of FaceTime Fly Fishing, you get free shipping on anything from Kevin. So uh, if you're into fly tying and lots of materials and great hooks, go to www.performanceflies.com. Check it out. Um, he just had a great fly tying workshop this past weekend. In fact, I'm going to see him here in a little bit after the show, and, and I'm excited to hear about it. But Kevin has great products. Don't hesitate to call him either um, if you can't find what you're looking for. I want to continue on here because um, I'm running out of time. A couple of things. Reels. Don't spend your money on a reel. Um, I know guys that have you know the $700 Able reels for trout fishing. Uh, if that's what you like, if you like to collect those things and look at them, that's great. They are not necessary. 
uh, when we're talking about trout. I don't. I I I think of rods and reels as equipment and not collectors' items. So understand that my approach to this may be different than some people. Um, I think of it as nothing more than gear. It's it's sort of like the hammer that I have out in the garage, you know, or the screwdriver. I don't think of having a great screwdriver. I think of having one that works, and uh, I think of fly fishing gear the same way. And so. I think if you're on a budget, that's how you should think about fly fishing gear. <laughs> but <coughs> not everybody on a budget um, thinks the same way I do. So don't spend a lot of money on your reel. I can tell you that one of the best bargains for a reel um, since I've been an adult has been the Orvis Bat and Kill. And again, I'm going back to Orvis, but it's a, it's a hard reel to beat. Uh, for the money, it's extremely tough to beat. It's functional. Uh, you can beat those things to death. There's, they have good warranties, and uh, I think it's, it's always been a good reel. In fact, I'm down to, I think I have one of them now, and it's probably 15 years old, but um, that is a great reel for the money. So if you're looking for something that's solid, you never have to worry about it. I would stay away from the plastic reels. There are several out there that are like a plastic composite. Don't buy those. Make sure you get something that's that's metal. But the Orvis Bat and Kill is really tough to beat for the money. So if you're going to spend some money on on a reel, that's a good one. Lines, fly lines for trout. If you're going to buy a line for trout, buy a double taper. That way you can flip it around. Um, I've always said on here uh, many many times. I like Cortland. I like the 444. But a double taper line, you get twice the use out of it. Most of the time when we're trout fishing, we're not throwing 90 feet. You're not going to wear out both ends at the same time. So buy something that you can flip that line around in a year or two years, and you have a brand new fly line essentially. So think budget-wise there. Leader and tippet. I get lots and lots of questions, mostly because I talk a lot about leaders and how important they are. But I get lots of questions on tippet material and leaders and what I build my leaders out of. And I have used the same products for many, many years. Uh, I love Maxima. I, I use the Ultra Green to build my leaders out of. I really think it's great material. Anybody that mics that stuff will tell you it mics a little inconsistently and it's it's a little smaller generally than, than what it says. But uh, what I like about Maxima is it knots well with a lot of other products. And I don't use Maxima Tippet. I use Rio Tippet. Uh, just the Power Flex. I really like it. It has no memory. When it's really hot and humid outside and you pull it off the spool, it's not pigtailed up um, like some of the other products. Uh, there, are, there are some that I literally despise uh, that are Tippet material. And, and it's just it's awful. And I can't believe they even sell it or they're, that they're in business. But I love Rio Tippet. I have found it to be strong. I have found it to not really well with, um, with Maxima. And it just does a great job for my leaders and, and what I like to use it for. So that is my uh, recommend <clears throat> recommendation there. I do not use fluorocarbon. Um, I always carry a little bit with me just in case. The one exception, or the one time that I will use fluorocarbon is if I'm fishing a dry and a dropper. I might use a fluorocarbon dropper down to the nymph just so that it sinks a little quicker. But um, I typically do not use fluorocarbon in my leaders. I, I don't want my leader to sink generally, especially if I'm fishing a dry fly. Um, you know, if you ever watch any of the videos, I you'll see me many times put floating all along the leader because I want it to stay up. Uh, I talked about this a couple of weeks ago. You, you don't want your leader to sink, uh, especially if you're throwing a dry fly. Once it sinks, uh, you can't do anything with it. You can't mend it. You can't introduce slack to it. Um, you need it to stay up on top. And so uh, I have found a, a new product moving into the next phase here. I found a new product thanks to a, a friend of mine, Boris Karamine, who uh, this guy just showers me with gifts. I love you, Boris. Thank you. <laughs> um, Boris got me some loon floatant called Loxa, and I had never used it. 
I have to tell you, it is dynamite. I really like it. I've, I've never used it. I, when I had my shop, I sold a lot of Loon products, and I don't remember this product being available then. But I have to tell you, it makes no grease mark, and it floats really, really nicely. So I'm a big fan of that. You put that stuff on your leader or on the end of your fly line, you don't have to worry about that stuff sinking, and it makes it a, a gem to mend. It makes it so easy. So um, <clears throat> big fan of that stuff. I also like... Um, Frogs fanning for floating, uh, particularly with CDC. Now, this LOXA stuff you can use on CDC. I haven't tried that yet. But it, that's one of the things that uh, it advertises is that it's good for CDC. So I can tell you that anything I put it on floats, and it, it's, been, it's been very, very nice. So if you're not familiar with that product, go check it out. It's made by Loon called LOXA, L-O-C-H-S-A, I think. But uh, terrific, terrific product. And Loon, everything they make is environmentally friendly. So um, check it out. It's, it is good stuff. I have no idea what it costs. That is one of the reasons that you want to spend less on your rod and reel <laughs> so that you have money to spend on all of these little things that you need when you're on the water. Um, and, you know, take your money. If you've got a budget, Take your money, spend half of it or maybe a little over half on gear and spend the, the other half fishing. Go out and fish. <laughs> so um, make sure that there's some money left over in the budget so you can get out and go and fish. But uh, those little products like that count. You know, that, that kind of stuff, you always need it. If you don't have it and you're on the stream, you'll wish you had it. So you want to be able to budget some, some money for, you know, your floating, your split shot. I like Blackbird split shot. It's real lead. So if you're in a state where you can't use lead, keep that in mind. But um, it's Blackbird shot is out of Canada. Comes in a neat little tube. It's easy to use, and it's replaceable. So you can, you can take it off the leader. I stick it in my vest pocket. I have a vest pocket just full of lead, all different sizes. And I can just reach in there and, and put on what I need. So, uh, you know, that kind of stuff uh, is important. Got a text from Anthony today, and he said, uh, are you going to go over fly tying budget things? And uh, it actually really uh, leads me right into my Christmas promotion. And so I want to tell you about this. I haven't completed this yet, but I'm going to put together – a fly tying kit that will be applicable wherever you go. Literally, it's going to be a little box that will have everything in it that you need anywhere in the country. You'll be able to tie anything you need. And it's going to be um, inexpensive, comparatively speaking. So it is just a box of basics. It's stuff that you need. Uh, it's, it's, it's going to be comprised of things that... Um, literally will give you the ability to, to tie and match just about anything anywhere. And so when we talk about budget, that is a whole other show when we get into fly tying. One thing I will say is uh, when you look at a fly tying vise, the more movement it has, generally the worse off you are. So you don't have to spend a lot of money to get a good vise, but make sure you buy good, good tools. Um, and we can, we can use that for another show. But uh, the Christmas promo, keep that in mind. I, I'll probably have this put together in my mind in another uh, couple of weeks. But um, this is going to be a pack of materials and hooks ready to go that you can literally put in your car, and you will have whatever you need anywhere you go, anytime. So that's going to be my Christmas promo. Um, Stay in touch with me through the week. We've got a great video, like I said, that will be up probably tomorrow. So check it out and uh, let me know your thoughts. Uh, stay in touch. My email is epstraup at gmail.com. Send me a text or leave me a message at 814-505-4568. And don't forget, 30 days is coming up. I can't wait to get that started. Really looking forward to it. 
stay in touch, and until next week, good fishing.